Hey everyone, welcome. So today we're gonna see Michael Knowles pretty much uh, show this pro, I don't even know what to call her, pro-trans, pro-Indian uh, American activist, uh, excuse me, American Indian, uh, or uh, indigenous as some would call it. Uh, he's gonna show her what's up. So, you know, we all wanna see that and we're gonna watch it right now. But first, please make sure you like our video, share it, and subscribe to the Resist the Mainstream channel. I'm your host, Darian. Cool, let's get right into it. Before I state my question, I just want to honor that we are all standing on the land that belongs to the Ojibwe and Anishinaabe people. Uh, Thank Dakota. you for mentioning that. I meant to mention that at the beginning of my yep. speech, yep. but I'm glad that Dakota, you Dakota, Northern Cheyenne, um, and they have been here for time immemorial, and so that leads into my question. So um, you make the statement that transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely, and so I'm going to ask you a question about that, but prior to that, I want to just state that for 5,000 years BC, Gala transcribed and androgynous trans priests of Sumerian goddesses have been around and noted. 200 to 300 years before Christ in ancient wow. Greece, there were gods worshiped by Gali priests who wore feminine attire and identified as women. Um, since we are standing on Anishinaabe land, Turtle Island, which is the nation that we live under, um, has I don't live two under Turtle people. Island. All right, well, maybe you should read a little more indigenous knowledge books. Um, <laughs> I just want to say I love, I love, I love Knowles's little, Michael Knowles' little quip right there. I don't live on Turtle Island. I, I mean, yeah, dude, amen, seriously. It's, it's like this whole narrative that people like this girl here, uh, you know, left-wingers are pushing of, oh, well, we're on stolen land. It's, uh, it's not ours, blah, 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 the Indians own it. Okay, well, why don't you give up your house uh, to and so-called indigenous person. You hear that? Oh, that, yeah, that's the sound of crickets. Uh, they're not going to do that, okay? So they don't actually mean it. It's all about this, you know, shame, like, oh, we should all be ashamed. Oh, we're on stolen land. Oh, actually, the Mishinabe people lived here, blah, blah, blah. You know, and this, I don't know if she's a university student or not. Uh, if she is, well, okay, that's kind of hilarious. She's, she's essentially getting education on stolen land, as, you know, as she probably would put it. But... Yeah, it's just, it, it's silly. It's, uh, and here's a question I have regarding this whole stolen land narrative. Oh, it's, uh, you know, where the, the indigenous actually own this, which tribe? Okay. Because, you know, we have this whole narrative that's often taught in, a, I'm sure, as you guys know, in common American culture where it's, yeah, you know, the, the indigenous people were just living here peacefully, you know, sitting around whatever, like hunting and fishing and just being clean and nice and, just really peaceful and doing their rituals, you know, and they were just, it was just all happy go lucky. It was all a joke until the white man came and he came and conquered them. Uh, yeah, no, they were killing and conquering each other literally all the time. Many of them are doing this. It was very normal. At the end of the day, conquest is a part of the human condition. Doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, indigenous, whatever. Okay. It's, it's part of the human condition. It's part of history. It's an ugly thing. But it's reality. So, I mean, this whole, like, oh, well, it was theirs. Okay, and it was theirs. What about the people before them who they conquered and killed and pillaged? Is it not theirs? I mean, and also, you know, just real quick, but a little tidbit. But the whole, like, oh, they were so peaceful with this idea. They literally practiced human sacrifice, all right? Many so-called indigenous tribes did this. Uh, it was a very common practice back in the day. So, yeah, I think that speaks for itself. So let's keep watching the video. Indigenous communities have used two-spirit uh, personas for the in entirety of their culture, and so that leads me uh -oh. to my question. When you say that transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely, I ask you, Mr. Knowles, how can we eradicate something that has been here as long as humans have? Well, yeah, there have been all sorts of crazy, terrible ideas for a very long time, too. You, you, you're pointing to civilizations that committed human sacrifice, okay? You're saying that some ancient pagan tribe worshipped demons and therefore we need to castrate children. That's not a good argument. Yes, that's true. There were all sorts of terrible tribes. In fact, as recently as a little over 500 years ago, the Aztecs here in the Western Hemisphere slaughtered 80,000 people in a sacrifice to one of the demons that they worshipped within the span of four days. That's not a recommendation of doing doing that. I don't think that we ought to consider it. Though, unfortunately, in our increasingly pagan and liberal culture, we do commit human sacrifice to the tune of 800,000 babies a year sacrificed through abortion. And it, it would make the Aztecs blush what we do. Love that. Just got to say real quick. I love that point Knowles made there. So based. 
So true. Okay, it's we. I mean, one could very easily argue that is a form of modern human sacrifice. I mean, it, it's literally by definition you're taking the a human life, whether you're pro-abortion or not. That's just the facts. So yeah, it's a great point. But that doesn't make it the right thing. You refer to a notion that is increasingly popular on the left, which is the idea of the two-spirit among various indigenous tribes. That is not real. That is a contrivance of white liberals in America. There have been various conceptions of sex and gender for all of you. You see her face right there? So just, oh, we got to go back for that. That was just, that was too good. Look at that. That is not real. That is a contrivance of white liberals in America. There have been various conceptions of sex and gender. For I just, it's funny how they look around like, you know, the, someone like Knowles, for example, makes a very valid and obviously correct point. That's just objectively true. And this face. Oh, did you hear what he just said? Oh, it's absurd. Like, you, you know, you can just you can just tell that's what she's thinking. It's just kind of funny. Of human history, uh, but but the the idea of the two spirited uh, indigenous intuition of some modern transsexual living in New York City who's a man who very much desires to be a woman that is a complete fiction. You will not find that in literature dating very far back. Uh, so what does it say about the question itself? The question, regardless of what the ancient Sumerians believed before they chopped up little little kids or whatever, is is it true? Can a man really be a woman, and can a woman really become a man? We all know that the answer to that question is false. That's why Professor McCloskey pulled out of our debate at the last moment next week, because even a distinguished professor knows, he has the intelligence to know, even if he is transgender identifying himself, that he can't win that debate because the idea is in defense. Just a quick little bit of context there with the Professor McCloskey that Knowles just mentioned. So this McCloskey guy, basically the long story short here was Knowles was looking for basically any professor, I believe, from my understanding, to debate him on the gender ideology, specifically in regards to transgenderism, whether it's a legitimate concept or not, which anyone with common sense knows it's not. Um, and this professor agreed to it and last second pulled out. He chickened out. And this guy was supposedly like the left's best, the left, excuse me, the left's best picking. He was, uh, you know, he knew what was up in terms of from their perspective. He knew that men aren't women and women aren't men and that anyone can identify as whatever and all that hocus pocus. And last second he pulls out, as Noel says, because he knows it's a, it's a losing debate. So the, the question becomes, how does, how does one know that someone with the total physical appearance of a man, how can one know that that person really is a woman? Do you have an answer to that question? How can you, to clarify, you're asking how can somebody know if they are a woman? And how can I know if that person is a woman? If, if not by the physical. By looking at them? Yeah, I think I cut Noel's off. He's going to say that. By looking at the physical, yeah. How is this a discussion? Guys, we're losing brain cells talking about this. How is this even a discussion that we entertain? It's just crazy. We're arguing over what a woman is. And whether her physical attributes matter, are you? And we might as well argue if, like, I don't know, like, do dogs do dogs have fur? Like, oh well, I don't know. What if it identifies as skinless? So, I mean, what? It's crazy. It's just crazy. Let's keep going. Almost there attributes their natural and enduring biological sex. What's the alternative to that? So my my response to you is then a question of. What is the purpose of knowing another person's sexual, I well, sexual see, there, there identity? Or per but let me finish. Yeah. If it's not for the premise of reproduction, hmm? no, and there's no, no, no. there's no need to relate oh. outside of that, Real then loud. I don't quite understand why we would need to question or. So this or is what this is what happens whenever you ask a transgender activist to explain even the basic premise of the movement is they'll immediately say, well, who cares? Why, why are you so obsessed with this? I'm not obsessed with this. I'm not the one who started sending men into the women's bathroom and taking away their trophies and castrating kids. I'm perfectly happy with the way things have worked for thousands of years. It is the transgender activists who are... Discuss here. I love how Noel's threw in that bit about castrating kids in there. I think that is important to emphasize. Uh, I mean, obviously, the men in bathrooms and stuff and lock women's locker rooms and sports, it's bad enough. That's horrible. 
hor- you know, it's horrific. And then with the castration of children, I mean, you literally have these pro-LGBT activists advocating for the mutilation of children. I mean, it's crazy. And then they'll argue, well, uh, you know, it's LGBT rights, trans children. You'll see the Biden administration talk about this. Trans kids. We're going to protect trans kids. There's no such thing as a trans kid, okay? That's a kid who's been groomed, abused, and in many cases, physically mutilated. That's wicked. Okay, so thank you, Knowles, for bringing that up. It's, uh, yeah, let's, you got to stop, we got to stop letting them frame this as like, oh, we're, we're on the side of human rights. What human rights? You're destroying people. You're leading them to destruction and despair. In many cases, when they can't even consent to it, not that anyone should be able to, but that's a different topic. Let's keep going here. I do upend everything. And so I think it's, it is at least my right to ask the question, okay, what is the premise of your movement? But they always deflect from that. They always withdraw from the debate. They always try to change the subject because there is no answer. So you ask me, well, what's the purpose of, why, why do you even care? What's the purpose of knowing someone's biological sex? Well, for starters, because we have civil rights specifically for women in the United States. We have special bathrooms for women. We have special sports leagues for women. We have all sorts of special places and rights and privileges and, and that are for women that are not for men. So if now some men, people who at the very least appear to be men, are claiming a right to go into those women's bathrooms, then they, we either have to abolish all of the special rights and privileges that have existed for women for all of human history and are enshrined in our law, or they need to explain to me how those men are actually women. And they can't do the latter, and I'm not willing to do the former, and I don't think women across this country are willing to do the former, even if a few people have been so ideologically blinded that they that they would give into this kind of an absurdity so that does it uh so true so true i think Knowles explained that brilliantly it's uh it's an absurdity i think he he said that perfectly it, it, it's an absurdity kind of like i said before it's 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 mad bonkers we're even having a discussion about this how is this a debate i don't know you tell me um yeah let us know in the comments what you thought of this video and if there are any other future reactions you'd like to see thank you guys so much for tuning in